This sermon is brought to you by Bloomfield Presbyterian Church, Belfast. To know Jesus and share his love. Our reading this morning is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. So if you have a Bible handy, you might want to join me. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy, and they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, Every warrior's bit used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Hello and happy Christmas to you all. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of uh, interaction this morning, so I hope that's okay. Can we play a game this morning? Would that be good to play a game? Yeah? Christmas is a time for parlor games, don't you think? Yeah, that's right. We're going to play a game. JJ's got it right. We're going to play a game called Ho 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 or No No No. Okay? We're going to talk about Christmas traditions and whether we are for or against them. Okay? So uh, I'm going to give you a Christmas tradition. And if you like it, you say Ho Ho Ho. If you don't like it, you say No No No. Okay, so can we, can we try out our ho-ho-hos together? One, two, three. Very good. And if you don't like it, you say one, two, three. Okay, all right. Are you ready for the first one? Okay. Brussels sprouts. Oh, we're, we're a Brussels sprouts kind of a church. Okay. Is there anyone against Brussels sprouts? On three. One, two, three. Oh, gosh, that's the minority report. This is, this is shocking to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Brussels sprouts is uh, number one. Okay. How about uh, plastic Christmas trees? Okay. Well, should we separate them out? We'll do, we'll do ho-ho-hos first and then no-no-nos, and then we'll be able to, to tell which it is. So all the ho-ho-hos go first on one, two, three. Okay. And those who are against the plastic Christmas trees, one, two, three. Yeah, I think, I think we're against them here. All right. I'm just trying to inject a little bit of division into Christmas because isn't that what the season is all about? Uh, what's another question? Okay. Uh, buying presents on Christmas Eve. Where, this, is, this is to shame. This is to shame all of you who were perhaps not as prepared as you might have been buying Christmas. You could have been buying other things on, on Christmas Eve. But uh, if you are buying presents on Christmas Eve, we need a ho-ho-ho on one, two, three. And if you are dead against that kind of shoddy behavior on three, one, two, three. I thought you guys would be much more prepared than that. Yes, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that. Uh, what else? Okay, here's one that might uh, split generationally. Okay, who thinks you should have a Christmas tradition where the children wash up? Yeah? Yeah? So think about it. Think about it, kids. We are proposing that all the children do all the washing up after Christmas lunch, okay? So all in favor say ho, ho, ho on one, two, three. Ho, ho, ho! And all who are against it on one, two, three. Mm, bad luck. You've been, you've been outvoted this morning, I'm, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Here's one that's close to home for me. What about summer Christmases? Who thinks you should have Christmas in hot weather? On three, one, two, three. Ho, ho, ho! (laughs) 
Who thinks it should be in the bleak midwinter? On one, two, three. <laughs> dear, oh dear, I think I'm outvoted on this. Can I tell you what my Christmases were like growing up? When I grew up, I remember waking up very early on Christmas morning, not just because I was so excited about the presents, but because the sunshine was just blazing through the curtains, because Christmas Day is, after all, one of the longest days of the year, isn't it? In Australia, it is anyway. And we would wake up, we would go downstairs and maybe get a traditional Christmas breakfast, a slice of pineapple, some mango, some lovely tropical fruit, that sort of thing. And we were a church going home, so uh, we made sure that we went to church first before opening presents. There's another one that we haven't done, actually, have we? Who, who says you should open up all your presents before church? On three. One, two, three. And then all the very righteous people now, all those who believe in delayed gratification, and <laughs> on three. One, two, three. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we, we are the sanctimonious types. We, uh, we, we believe in, in delayed gratification. But uh, in my household, we didn't open presents until church. But I would go to church in my best kind of surfer t-shirt, ironed for a special occasion, board shorts, that kind of thing. Then we would come home, we would have our presents, we'd have our Christmas lunch. We'd still pull the crackers and we'd put on the, the silly hats and we'd tell jokes and we'd eat till we burst. And then burst we did outside for a swim. And then we'd play some backyard cricket, of course. And we'd round off Christmas Day, Christmas Day with a traditional Australian carol. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Christmas in Australia on a scorching summer's day. Jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is butte. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a clapped-out rusty ute. That was Christmas for me, and I can tell that is not Christmas for you. There you are with your arms folded saying, Stop getting Christmas wrong, Glenn. That's not how it is, isn't it? We tend to think that Christmas happens in the bleak midwinter. We've even got carols about it that are so insistent about the snow falling. There's even an entire verse just devoted to snow was falling, snow on snow, snow on snow on snow on snow. And we think that Christmas is a winter celebration. Well, I've had half my Christmases in the summer and half my Christmases in the winter. And I'm here to tell you, I think you've got it right. Okay. I think Christmas is actually a winter celebration, according to the Bible. Can we have Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 up on the screen? We had this as our reading earlier, famous Christmas reading. Notice the theme of darkness. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. Have you noticed the theme of darkness in all the Christmas readings? In John's Gospel, chapter 1, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Or do you know the story with the shepherds watching their flocks by night? And then the glory of the Lord shone around. Actually, Christmas is a time when we are in the darkness, but there is news of a great light. And I think that's really good news, isn't it, when Christmas is not the most wonderful time of the year. I'm looking out at you all in masks. I'm looking out at you all, and perhaps there's people who you wished could have been with you this Christmas, and they're not. Perhaps it's because of social distancing. Perhaps it's because of grief. Perhaps it's because of mourning. There are about 700,000 people who died this year which means there are 700,000 empty chairs at Christmas lunch, and we feel those losses very keenly, don't we? We need to know that Christmas is a time for the darkness. Christmas can handle our dark situations because it is not about celebrating our sunny circumstances. Christmas is for dark places. I wrote a poem about that and about my experience. It's called Christmas in Dark Places. It used to be summer when Christmas came round, neath tall southern skies over sun-scorched ground with the backyard cricket and the barbies, the beach, the chunks of mangoes to watch the Queen's speech, the slatterings of sunscreen, the glorious glare, and toasting the sunshine in the warm evening air. It used to be summer when I was young. 
a golden age in a land far flung. But there came a point I went up in the world, I crossed a divide and summer had died. It's winter now when Christmas rolls round. We celebrate still though with different surrounds. We mull the wine, strike the matches, light the fires, batten the hatches, gather around the warming beam of family love or a TV screen. So safe inside, no place to go, we toast marshmallows and let it snow. Our summer's gone now, if you've been around. You've felt the fall, life's run aground. We've gone up in the world, seen the light die. So what's the answer? The dark defy? Stoke the hearth, retreat indoors, rug up warm with you and yours? The shadow reaches even here. Yet this is the place for Christmas cheer. It's dark in the Bible when Christmas is spoken. Always a bolt from the blue for the broken. It's the valley of shadow. It's the land of the dead. It's no place in the inn, so he stoops to the shed. He's born to the shameful, bends to the weak. He becomes the lowly, the God who can't speak. And yet, what a word, this Savior who comes. Our dismal, abysmal depths he plums. Through crib and then cross to compass our life, to carry and conquer our brother in strife. He became what we are, our failures he shouldered, to bring us to his life forever enfolded. He took on our frailty, he took on all comers to turn all our winters to glorious summers. It's Christmas now, whatever the weather. Some soak in the sun, some huddle together. But fair days or foul, our plight he embraces. Real Christmas shines in the darkest of places. We've been playing ho, 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 and no, no, no. I've got one more question to, to give to you as we play ho, 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 or no, no, no. Here's my question. Ultimately, is Christmas about getting, not giving? Real Christmas, here's what I'm going to tell you. Real Christmas is act actually about getting, not giving. If you agree, you can say ho, ho, ho in one, two, three. One, two, three. If you disagree that ultimately Christmas is about getting, not giving, then in... One, two, three, you can say no, no, no. One, two, three. Mm, some of you haven't voted, I've noticed. <laughs> it's a trap, you're thinking. It is, it's a trap. It's a trap. Did you notice verse 6 of our reading? Can we have verse 6 up on the screen? For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Do you notice... The ultimate Christmas present there. What is the Christmas present? Who is the Christmas present? It's the child. It's the son. It's the son of God. And so imagine in that manger, the wriggling baby on the straw, and imagine around his ankle, a little gift tag. And it just says, from God to you, to us. A child is born. To us, the Son of God is given. That means to you and 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 to you. Might take a bit long if I go around the whole church, but it is to you, each and every one of you, have a gift this Christmas. The ultimate gift is Jesus Christ. The Son has been given to you from the Father. In the midst of our darkness, in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our sin, Jesus comes to shoulder all our frailty, to shoulder all our mess, and even on the cross to shoulder all our sin. Frank is talking today about today is a little bit of a taster for Easter. I'll be back at Easter. Well, guess what? Christmas is a bit of a taster for Easter. At Christmas, we see Jesus wriggling on the wood, gasping for breath. You know, at Easter, we see the same. Jesus given to us to shoulder our darkness, to shoulder our frailty, to shoulder even our sin, wriggling on the wood, gasping for breath. But do you know why he's there? He's there as a gift to you, from God the Father to you. So this Christmas, 
in amidst all the other gifts that you receive, will you make sure that you receive Jesus? Will you make sure that you say yes to the ultimate Christmas present? To say, God the Father, thank you for Jesus. I receive him into my life. If you want to find out more about what that might mean, I've written a little book called The Gift. I've got a copy in my hand. You can come and get an early Christmas present from me afterwards. Or there's another copy just out in the foyer there. You can pick up this copy of The Gift and you can figure out God's great Christmas present for you. But it's like the great Christmas carol, isn't it? O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Let me pray for us. Shall I pray? Our Father, thank you so much for the ultimate Christmas present, your Son, the Lord Jesus, given to us in the darkness. I pray that every single one of us would know, trust, and receive your Son, the Lord Jesus, this Christmas. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer as the Adair family lead us. Thank you for listening to Bloomfield Presbyterian Church Sermon Audio. We're a congregation in East Belfast with worship services at 11am and 7pm every Sunday. For more information, visit bloomfieldpresbyterian.org.